Next, I'd like to present our next speaker, uh, who's uh, also my senator, and I'm very proud to introduce to you John Erpenbach. Here's what's going on. Uh, really, really bad stuff. Uh, I'm really happy to see everybody here on a Saturday night. First of all, this kind of crowd on a Saturday night is impressive. This kind of crowd on a Saturday night when the Badgers are beating Ohio State right now, 7 to nothing, is very, very good. <laughs> there is a huge divide in Wisconsin that has spread throughout the country. In the past week, I've been giving speeches in Denver and San Diego, and it's the same thing. It's the same thing in New York. Okay. It's the same thing in Dallas, believe it or not. It's the same thing. The Republicans have said it's us versus them. And in Wisconsin, as you all know, it's never really been an us versus them. It's, okay, we don't necessarily get along, but you know what? We can sit down and we can talk about this. And you know what? Maybe we can work something out. And you know what? Maybe we can come to some sort of consensus and a general agreement on something. That doesn't happen anymore. Even in the Republican Senate caucus, they are told what to do. You do not have a choice. You have to vote this way or you're going to get a Tea Party primary. Classic example. The majority of the Republicans in the state Senate don't want guns in the Capitol. Guess what? We are going to have guns on the Senate floor, but not up in the gallery. Even though it's the same room. The Senate chambers, the gallery and the floor, it's the same room. So there'll be no, no uh, opposing no guns up in the gallery. But senators and staff can carry them. I, I don't get it. I thought it was all about jobs. I, I thought it was all about special sections on jobs. I don't have a problem with guns. I hope you have a job to afford a gun. That's what I believe in. That's what we should be working on. It shouldn't be, it should be making sure you can go and buy a gun if you want to have a gun. But that's not what we're doing right now at the Capitol. We are dealing with legislation that further divides us. I don't recognize Wisconsin anymore. I don't. I really truly don't. We have hard-working, dedicated teachers. We have hard-working, dedicated public employees at the local level, at the county level, at the state level. And what we have done or what they have done is blamed the problems that le legislatures and governors in the past have created, we've blamed it on them. We've taken it out on them. And then to read in the paper this morning that Scott Walker took a raise really, really makes me mad. Really makes me mad. And to find out that, oh yeah, that's right, I made a campaign pledge, I'd be paying for my retirement and something, and he never did until he was called out on it. So if he wants a war, he's got one. Because we're not, we're not backing down. We are going to come for the door and collect signatures. And mark my words, I bet you we get close to 700,000. I really firmly believe that. There are that many people from all walks of life who perhaps voted for Governor Walker and have told me this is not what I signed up for, that they're, they're ready to recall him. He doesn't care. He doesn't listen. He just plows straight ahead. The man has to be stopped simply because he doesn't share values that our entire state, Democrat, Republican, Independent, Libertarian, we all essentially share the same values. Good schools, clean environment, safe roads, and we're protected. We all, we all share those values. We all want our kids' lives to be better than our lives. That's a value we all share. Right now, he's given away the store to the corporations, and he hasn't created one single job. Each month, we lose. There's new jobs, but we lose more than we have. It's not working. And it's not working because he's not reaching out to work with us. He's not reaching out and sitting down and, and, and just listening to other ideas. The only way Scott Walker is going to be listening to you right now is if your last name is Comma Inc. That's the only, re the only, only, <laughs> only group he's listening to right now. I'm waiting to like sell the naming rights to the Capitol. I'm, wait, I'm waiting uh, to, to hear the, the Senate president say, uh, the Wisconsin State Senate is in session, brought to you by the insurance companies of America. <laughs> you know, that, that's, what, that's what it's like. It's already 
just the fact, just the fact that we are not even talking about universal health care. And that's the real way you create jobs, is to help businesses with a high cost of their health insurance. There you go. That's yeah. what you do. In the end, whether, and I, I've been to a couple of Occupy things, whether it's Occupy Wall Street or Occupy Maui, which is where I really, really should go, um, or, or Occupy Middleton or Occupy Prairie, it's like whatever the case may be, and it's what we did in, in February, March, and what the Assembly did, we just want fair. We don't want to gouge one side to pay for another side. We want it to be fair. Corporations right now are gouging us. Corporations right now are making historic profits because of the roads we built that their employees use to go to work. Because of the schools we built and, and educated their employees. They're making money off of us. And then they're parking it offshore because of this uncertain economy. Mm -hmm. They are the ones making it uncertain because they're not spending their money creating more jobs. They're sitting on the money. So we just want it to be fair. That's all we want. Because if it's fair, I think Democrats win. I also think Democrats win if you can somehow take all of the money, God forbid, out of politics, and we just stand up on a street corner and have a debate, the majority of Wisconsin is going to agree with what we believe in. They always have, and they always will. So, when you're working on the recalls, and I know you're all going to be working on it, we all are going to be working on the recalls. I want you to talk to your family, I want to talk to your friends, I want you to talk to your neighbors, and I want you to tell them what you think and what you believe, but more importantly, I want you to tell them, but don't take my word for it. Get online, read the legislation. Get online, find out what they're doing to Medicaid that's gonna kick 60,000 people off of Badger Care. Tell them to read it. They have a responsibility now to engage and understand what's going on. And make them a deal. You'll turn off MSNBC if they turn off Fox. Yeah. That's the deal. So in the end, um, the recall is going to happen. And there's a lot of talk about, oh, who's going to run, who's going to do this. And nobody knows yet. We do know that we have a lot of very hungry people in the state ready to hit the street on November 15th all over Wisconsin, even up north. Yep. My uncle, who lives up north, is going to be taking, now granted he has to drive because the houses are really spread out, but he's going to gather signatures. And this is going to happen. It is going to happen. And when it does happen, this can't be, okay, well, he's Scott Walker and our candidate isn't. We have to tell them why we should be taking over the governor's office. We have to give them a reason. We have to give them hope. We have to show them that we can have great schools. We have to show them that absolutely, yes, it's not government-run health care that Republican state senators and representatives take. It's just giving you an opportunity to join a large purchasing pool and you choose where you want to go. We have to give them hope. And I know we can do that. I mean, I know we can do that. Simply because we are better than they are right now. Collectively, as a state, we can do better. If we all work together because... We're better than what we have right now. We are. So I want to thank you for what you're about to do. Bundle up. Make sure you're warm. Don't catch colds. Um, and I will see you, like Kelda will see you, up and down the streets, making our case, telling people why we believe this is important for us, but also for our kids. Somebody mentioned high-speed rail. It's a generational mistake the governor made. Amen. A generational mistake. a lot more money to build that line that they know they're going to have to build in order to remain economically competitive, which is what I thought this was all about. We had a chance to create four to 6,000 jobs immediately, and the governor said no, even before he was in office. Yes, yes. The guy's got to go. He doesn't have our, when I say our, I mean Democrats, Republicans, everybody who lives in the state, he doesn't have our interests at heart right now. I really don't think he does. It's all about the almighty buck right now. Mm -hmm. And that's not, the way, that's not the way I was raised. It's not the way we were taught to think. We have thousands of people in our state right now struggling. Thousands. One paycheck away from living in their car. 
I see families every once in a while in the morning at early at PDQ. That's that's their bathroom. They wash up, they change, they drop their kids off at school, hmm. and they go about their day, but they're living in their van. Not a lot of them, but I guess what? I didn't see them a few years ago, but I'm seeing them now. We can do so much better. We can do better than this. And every single person who disagrees with you either has a teacher in the family, has a public employee in the family, has a good friend who's a public employee, even the Republicans who may disagree with us know somebody who's really struggling right now. We have to put a face on it. And then we have to give people hope, which I know we can do. Thanks for having me out tonight. I really, truly appreciate it. And I will see you up and down the streets. Thanks.